we're going to put uh, railway sleeper steps down here, probably angled out so that they're easy to get to the barbecue as well. We've got all our sleepers now. So we're going to start building on the steps today. Just checking through my notes. So we've got, so this is the overall shape that we're using. So we've got a bit of a triangle. The reason we're coming out so wide is because they want to have a, an easy run down to where their patio areas for their barbecue. And then the actual layout for the steps here. So we've got three treads and one riser. There's a nice shallow run. You can see here we've got a meter out from the front of the wall and a meter and a half back. These are just rough guesstimates, but it's always good to sort of sit back and have a look and see how the overall thing actually looks in the garden. But I'm going to have to employ my old mate Pythagoras shortly because we're extending the wall, or extending the path steps outside the wall. I'm not going to know if this is square unless I actually do Pythagoras and actually try and figure out a triangle here to actually measure exactly what I need. So what I do, so normally I use a three, four, five triangle, but what I've done, so here, I'm just halving the three, four, five. So I've got one and a half, two, two and a half. So I'll measure that back from the back edge of the first sleeper, which will be roughly there measure along and actually mark on the sleeper at two meters and then the joining point there should be two and a half meters once i've got that matched up then i know that is perpendicular to the line of where the wall is then i'll know that when i build the rest of the steps up as i go up here they'll actually line up properly and we're actually going to be stepping the sleepers in the first two are actually going to be the same size at 2.4 meters I've gone through just to work out what the rough sizes will be just to step them down so that when we get back up to the top they should be the right size so the first two will be the same size and then they'll stop in step in sorry at 10 centimeters for each one as we go up and that's how it should look in the end I don't know yet whether or not I actually need to put edging sleepers to hold back soil but I know once I set the line in I'll know where the height of the steps actually is. It's always a bit difficult when you've got such undulation and changes in shape, what you're going to need to do. So when I get close to that and I've actually got some of it built, I'll know a bit better. And I'll come to carry on the video then and show you. Start to cut the sleepers now for the right sizes. What you want to do is make sure you actually mark all the way around. You can cut it with chainsaw if you don't want a tidy finish, but one of these circular saws is a much better option because you get a much tidier finish. To show you the edge of the first one I did. As you can see, it's a much, much tidier finish for what we're looking for. Down in the ground at the bottom there, it's not so much of an issue, but as the steps come up, they want to be tidy. Um, so you mark it all the way around, and then cut through. You'll cut through one side. The blade isn't enough to go through the whole depth, so you have to do one side, and then turn it over and do the other side. The only thing to make sure is that when you set your blade up, because they can actually be angled, what you want to make sure is that your blade is actually at 90 degrees. You can do a test cut on a bit of wood that you're not going to use um, and then adjust it so it's correct for the main cuts. Otherwise, what you end up with is a cut that kind of goes that way and then goes that way. And then when you try and cut it to line up, it looks bloody awful. So just make sure you've got the blade the right, the right angle. Okay, so another cut done tidy up your burrs with a good quality chisel it's very sharp you can either do this as you go along or you can do it at the end once everything's built it can be easy to just do it as you go because then you don't have one huge job which takes ages at the end but that just keeps it tidy so that little hands can't get caught on any bits but you can get some um, coarse grade glass paper or sandpaper grade 30 or 40 and just take off the corners at the end just to leave them that little bit smoother okay next up is screw the sleepers together point being is it's the screws that are important now these are index timber screws you can't really see that because of the light there we go but they're specially made for doing sleepers so they've got the screw thread at the end but they're smooth along the rest of the length and that makes it much much easier to actually travel through the rest of the sleeper you've got thread along the whole length 
it's a nightmare to do. But these are brilliant. These are 60p each. So you don't want to waste too many of those. One thing to bear in mind is when you buy these, this is a box of 50, so it's 30 pounds, um, is the little heads that come with them that fit. There are two different varieties. That one came with a kit that I bought with loads of different heads on it. But then there's this one that actually came with the previous box. Now, as it happens, this box didn't come with any at all. So, fortunately, I had those. Uh, don't bother trying to do this with a battery-powered drill. Um, you're going to run out of battery very, very quickly because the work rate for the drill is very, very high. So, um, I've got my Bosch, 24-volt Bosch. This does everything it's brilliant and the only reason i got this one is because my hilti got nicked so i'll get this together so i'm using four screws to bolt each of the treads together and then four for the riser to bolt down into the treads and i'll show you again in a minute once i've got these four bolted together right so uh, a couple of tips for this part um, when you're knocking the timber into place and getting everything lined up always use a rubber mallet don't use a, a normal hammer damages the timber too much and it looks terrible when it's finished and what was the other thing oh yes recessing the screws so on the surface when you actually put the screws in make sure they're recessed especially when you're doing the joins down here and it lines them up you want to recess them so that these can go flush up against them now obviously timber is a natural product so you're going to get slight variations in height there's going to be little gaps but that's part of the charm. And if we see here, see the lines quite regular. So you can see it kind of lines up ish. Okay, so we're halfway through. Come along nicely. All the hard stuff was getting the ground level in the first place. Now you can see how that line's working out. The only other thing I wanted to quickly show you was the what the half cuts that I've done on the sleeper. So you can see how it should be sitting on the line and that's how it should look when you're cutting through so you've got uh, so that shows you've got the blade at 90 degrees well unfortunately due to some humongous tree roots that I found in there and uh, a load of form work that the builders who did the patio left in the ground which took me an extra hour to take out um, we're not going to quite get finished today so I mean I'm back tomorrow anyway I'm having to change tomorrow so it's not looking too bad the lines looking good and it's as sturdy as anything just the weight of these alone uh, I think 17 it's about three quarters of a ton it'll weigh once it's finished being built it'll just hold itself in place but what I am going to do I haven't got them here but I'm actually going to get a couple of ground anchors drill through probably this middle one just a hole and then actually put a one meter rod that goes straight down into the ground at two points and that will just anchor it in place. The weight of these alone is about three quarters of a ton in total but to make sure that uh, they don't move I've got these. It's just a one meter metal rod, 10 mil, and you use these as a ground anchor and what I'm going to do is centre of the bottom step here and I've got another one I'm going to put in the centre of the step up here and it's literally just a case of lots of muscle so I've got 10 mil drill bit to actually cut through and actually that's a, a, a stone drill bit but I do have another one um, just to cut through and then it's just a case of hitting through with a mallet and I'll just take it right down and that will stop any shift in it it's been up for two weeks and the line here shows it hasn't shifted didn't think it was going to and this is probably overkill 